Reverend Matthew Smedley is the executive director and CEO of Mission Possible. Now, over the past 10 plus years, Matt has helped Mission Possible transition its programming from offering basic street care to being a leading community economic development organization in Vancouver's downtown east side. Through his role as Mission Possible is varied and complex, his favorite part about the job has stayed consistent. It's the people, the people. He loves both the Mission Possible team that works alongside him, as well as the community of amazing people who offer everyday inspiration. Welcome to the program, good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I was asking you earlier in the pre-interview what the little badge was on the on the uh, on your jacket on your shirt, and you said it is part of the shirt. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, just the brand of the shirt my wife had bought for me. <laughs> Isn't that nice. Now you are a pastor, and your church is the Church of the Nazarene. Tell me how they have. Uh, engaged you and enthused you to do what you do on Vancouver's east side? Yeah, so uh, the Church of the Nazarene is a, a small denomination in Canada, um, but one that has, uh, you know, was started in the U.S. Um, early 1900s um, and, and ultimately was uh, kind of birthed out of a, a, a real desire to care for people who were experiencing marginalization and exclusion um, and, uh, you know, fast forward to today, um, it's a, uh, an, a denomination that has, um, you know, compassionate ministries as, as kind of a, a core practice of what it does. And so uh, Mission Possible was started as a, a Nazarene compassionate ministry uh, back in the, the late 80s, early 90s, and um, ultimately uh, was done so to, uh, to kind of carry on this, this love and care for people that, uh, that was in, that's inspired by Jesus and um, really wanting to um, help people know their worth and their dignity and the value that they have as humans. So Mission Possible is not just for Vancouver. It's uh, the worldwide ministry of the Church of Nazarene. Well, the Church of the Nazarene is worldwide. Uh, Mission Possible is kind of the local expression uh, in, in this uh, context. In, in, in Vancouver, in that part. In of Vancouver, mm -hmm. yeah. In the downtown east side primarily, yeah. Because I would think as you drive through, you probably, not you, but other people are saying to themselves, and I say to myself, this has got to be mission impossible. Absolutely, yeah. And I, and I think uh, that was kind of the, the, the sense behind the name, um, that as you kind of see the overwhelming challenges that are visible, that are, you know, on the streets and kind of in your face, um, that it, it that, you know, it, it really does feel impossible. Um, and so uh, when, when the organization was named, it was, it was really um, with the understanding that, yeah, it, it may be impossible, but, you know, with, with God's help, it is possible. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to carry out this mission of love and care and, uh, and make a difference in the lives of people that we touch. Well, as you well know, Jesus once said, I've come to bring you life in all its fullness. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're trying to do in the downtown Vancouver. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, tell us exactly what your organization does, because there's about 20,000 people uh, down there. What exactly do you do and how do you do what you do? And thirdly, yeah. what do you need to help you continue doing what you do? So the, the primary thing that we do at Mission Possible is, uh, is we run an employment readiness program. And so we're really trying to create a pathway for individuals who have been out of, out of work uh, for, you know, most of them for several years, uh, many years for some, uh, some having never worked, you know, th their entire lives and they're, you know, approaching middle age. Um, so really diverse group of individuals, but um, those who, who come and, and uh, you know, use Mission Possible services are folks who are wanting to, you know, have, have reached a point in their, in their lives where they wanna take some steps forward and they want to uh, begin to, to move toward employment and, and using their own, uh, their own abilities um, to become more sustainable and, and be able to care for themselves. And so the way that we do that is uh, we, we run an employment readiness program, which provides training, workshops, and coaching. Uh, and then we run two social enterprise businesses. And uh, those are businesses that we started. Uh, the first one was started back in 2009. 
and uh, the uh, it's called MP Maintenance. Uh, we do exterior property cleaning. And uh, this was a business that ultimately was started to create employment opportunities for individuals in the downtown east side. Uh, the second one is called Mission Possible Neighbors. And this one is a, a community watch service and security company. And this one was started to be able to provide safety and security services for the downtown east side, um, while also hiring individuals from this community to be able to provide those. And in the process, you know, it's, it's creating kind of this on-ramp for people to move back into employment as they get training, they get experience, uh, they're able to move on to permanent work after, after working with us. So that's kind of the crux of what we do. We also, you know, we provide a, a, some meals uh, to the community um, and, and some, other, uh, some other support services, but that, uh, the, the employment readiness program is really the, the key part of, of what we're doing. How, how, do, how do people find themselves if they're not born there? How do they find themselves in that, in that vicinity, in the downtown east side? Is, is, so, there, is there one one major cause? Uh, I would say no. Uh, there there really is a diversity of of reasons that that individuals move here, um, if they if they haven't grown up here. Um, but uh, the main thing is is that this is a community um, where where people can survive. Um, it's a community with the lowest cost housing uh, in Vancouver. Uh, but also has supports for uh, individuals if they need food, if they need clothing, if they need um, other other types of uh, uh, of um, supports. That that those are here in this community, and so that's that's kind of the the reason that individuals, when they find themselves um, in a really challenging situation, which could be anything from you know they're struggling with a, a mental health issue, um, it could be a family breakup. You know, somebody could be somebody who has suffered a, an injury and, and they're not able to work anymore. And, you know, they, they find themselves not being able to pay rent anymore and, and those kinds of things. Uh, there, there's a whole host of reasons that, that individuals, uh, you know, find themselves moving to the downtown east side. But it, it ultimately is, is because uh, of the cost of, of living, uh, you know, being some of the most affordable rents in Vancouver uh, and those additional supports that are here. How many people... Uh, are they in that entire area? So there's about 20,000 people who, who make up the, the downtown east side. And of those 20,000, over half are living in poverty. And so, I mean, it's a huge uh, concentration of, of poverty, which, you know, has, has lots of, uh, you know, kind of various um, symptoms that go along with that, um, you know, which a lot of it is, is the mental health challenges that um, that are, are, are prevalent more here in the downtown east side than, you know, throughout the, the rest of the city or throughout the rest of the country. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly, um, you know, lots of isolation, which is, is one of the biggest things. So many of the, the homes that people move into here are really just rooms. So uh, an SRO is a single room occupancy uh, place, which is kind of a, you know, it's a turn of the century hotel where, you know, you have a whole number of rooms on one floor and one shared washroom uh, at the end of the hall. And, uh, you know, those are, those are the types of living situations. So if you think about it, it's actually some of the most expensive real estate in Vancouver because people can pay, you know, five, six, $700 a month for a 10 by 10 room. And, uh, but ultimately it's, uh, it's the cheapest place that they can find. Um, but uh, it, per square foot, it's some of the most expensive real estate in Vancouver. Now there must be multiple reasons uh, men and women find themselves in the downtown east side. Just name a couple of them. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the mental health, the, the, you know, the physical injuries or, or disabilities, um, you know, addiction, um, uh, there can be um, you know, family breakup is, is a big one. Um, individuals who, you know, were, were married, went through divorce, um, you know, uh, the, a, a lot of times you'll have, you know, the, the men who um, end up, you know, not able to afford a, a home of their own. And so they, they move to this neighborhood because, um, the, the, you know, mom and family stays uh, in, in the house or in the, wherever they were living. Um, and so there's a, a large concentration, you know, it's, it's really, um, I, I think the statistic is right around 75% uh, uh, men 
in this community and, and about 25% women. Um, that may be off by a few percent, but um, it's certainly majority male and uh, uh, middle age to you know upper middle age um, is uh, yeah, the majority of who, who remain in this community. Do you have any statistics uh, available to you of how many of the 20,000 people will be able to find themselves outside of that, to find, let's say, a normal life, uh, normal employment, another apartment in a better neighborhood? Is, is that possible? Is that a dream or a goal? It is for some people. Um, the work that we do is very people-centered. So we, we're not really looking to prescribe uh, what we want people to um, uh, want their life to look like. It's really helping them set their own goals and helping them be able to achieve those. Um, for some individuals, yes, they want to move out of this community. They, they would prefer to have, you know, their, their own place in, you know, either in a suburb or a different part of the city. Um, but really, that's, that's up to them uh, to decide. Um, <clears throat> The, you know, the, when you think about the 10,000 individuals who you know, are, are struggling with poverty, um, you know, around 7,000 of those are individuals with permanent disabilities. And so uh, they generally receive some uh, uh, financial assistance from the province um, to be able to, to support them, to be able to you know, meet their needs you know, day to day, but uh, it, it's not, certainly not enough to live on. Um, and have a, a, a life that you can, you know, that, that has um, access to some of the amenities and some of the uh, opportunities that, that uh, people who are, are, you know, middle income would have, um, things like that. Those, those who struggle with, with poverty, you know, uh, and, and are on, you know, have a, have a disability are really, um, it, it's a really uh, challenging situation. Um, and I think there's, there's certainly evidence to say that the financial supports that are there um, from the province are are are, are woefully inadequate, um, and we we as a uh, you know as a community as a as a province as a country should should be uh, investing more um, and and uh, caring more uh, uh, more um, yeah just more fully I guess uh, for for individuals. Do do you as part of your ministry? This is part of your ministry. But is it is it something that you do for like five or ten years and then graduate and go on to something else, or is this a lifetime commitment for you? When I say a lifetime, for me, five, ten, yeah, five, ten. For seconds. me, for me personally, yeah. You mean? Um, you know, I I think that's a great question. Um, I I think I would approach it uh, the way that uh, I would approach any any sort of job I, if I reach a place where um, I am no longer. Uh, helping the organization to thrive and helping the organization to uh, fulfill its mission and really uh, impact this community, then, you know, I, I think at that time, it's, it's, you know, that's a good point in time for me to move on and, and find something else to, um, to do and, and allow someone else to come in who can, um, who can do that better. Um, but, you know, certainly for, um, you know, the, this work that I feel very called to personally, um, and have a very um, uh, personal, um, interest and, and kind of stake in it, um, you know, it, it, it's very important to me. And so uh, whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else, I think uh, uh, I would want to um, just continue to use my, my giftings until they're no longer beneficial and then, <laughs> and then find a new place for, for them to be used. So where, where were you born? Where, where, where did you come from to do this? Uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania. So originally from the States and uh, I, I moved to, to Canada back in 2003, and uh, my wife and I were in grad school at the time. Uh, we were looking to come here, kind of complete our degrees and move on. Um, and, you know, as, as life goes, um, the plans that we make don't, don't often pan out the way that we expect them to. And so uh, I, I started out at Mission Possible volunteering. Uh, I was invited by a friend of mine and, uh, that uh, was really my first encounter with the downtown east side. I'd been in Vancouver for, you know, two or three years before I, I really got to, to know the city. And uh, that volunteer opportunity was, uh, was very impactful for me. Uh, and so once I had the opportunity to start working part-time, 
um, I, uh, I, I took that and so I started working part-time at Mission Possible in 2007 um, and then worked until uh, 2010 uh, part-time and then uh, I've been full-time ever since. And then um, as, as things go, sometimes you stick around a place too long and they put you in charge. And so as of uh, 2016, I, I moved into the role as executive director and CEO and uh, have really just, um, you know, as, as these things go, we often kind of think what we're bringing to our job is, you know, we, we're giving and, you know, we've, we've got skills and we can offer things. And, and while that's true and, and everyone is, um, you know, that, that's how, how these organizations and, and, and works thrive, what, what really is true is, is what we receive in return um, is, you know, uh, is multiplied, you know, it, it's really, um, uh, it's been really transformative for me. Uh, it's been a, an incredible opportunity to, to live and learn from individuals in this community to hear their stories and um, uh, just completely change my perspective on, uh, you know, on life and on, on the way that, uh, I, I approach uh, both the work that I do, but also approach uh, work in general. And so it's been uh, incredibly transformational for me. What kind of a budget are you responsible for? Uh, and what kind of a budget do you need to raise to do the plan that you've got? Because you said at the beginning, leadership is a behavior, not a title. I can mm -hmm. see that in the way you answer these questions. But what kind of a budget are you looking for? And where, where does it mostly come from? Yeah, so Mission Possible is kind of unique in that we, uh, we're we an organization, uh, we're, we're a charitable organization, uh, but we wholly own these, these social enterprise businesses that we started. And so, uh, you know, within those, we do, um, we do about one and a half million dollars of, of fee for service work. Um, and then on the, on the charitable side, um, everything from the, you know, the, the meals that we provide to the training, to the coaching and, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, we have about another million dollars of, of uh, revenue that we have to, uh, we have to raise. And uh, ultimately that provides, um, you know, kind of the support structure for individuals who are working. And so uh, it's kind of those two combined together. Um, this year is about two and a half million dollars. And our, our goal ultimately um, is to continue to grow the organization uh, because we know that in this community, there's there's hundreds, um, ultimately thousands of people who uh, would um, really uh, appreciate, would really um, benefit from, and and thrive under the the opportunity to to move into employment. But due to barriers that they're facing, really feel stuck, um, feel like they can't, you know, that's not really an option for them. And so what we're trying to do is is help them understand that. That it is an option, um, that there is a pathway, and um, that there's a community of support here that really can cheer people on as they're they're moving into uh, moving into employment. So, what personal satisfaction do you get out of, out of this position? Uh, for for me, it's really uh, it, it really is about the love of uh, the people in this community, um, and so when I see individuals who uh, who come into our organization and um, really are, you know, just experiencing um, real self-doubts, um, you know, have, have a, a sense of, of hopelessness, um, but are, you know, they're, they're willing to take a risk and say, well, maybe, maybe I'm going to try this out and see maybe if this would work. Um, and to see their whole mindset shift, you know, to, to really begin to develop a real sense of confidence um, you can you can just see kind of the dignity you know that they feel walking into the space, putting on a uniform, you know, doing the work, walking walking down the street, having people thank them for the work that they're doing, cleaning up the city, um, all those kinds of things together uh, just create an experience for people that um, is is really transformational, and and it becomes pivotal for them, and and that that kind of builds and and creates an opportunity uh, for them to move on. To work outside of Mission Possible, which is really the goal uh, for us. We, we want to see people come in here to really grow, to build their confidence and, and take that and, and leverage that into uh, something outside of Mission Possible. And so when we see that happen, uh, it, you know, that's incredibly rewarding for me um, because it, you know, those are lives that are transformed. Um, it's people that, that once again 
you know, sense the value and the worth that they have and um, are, are just uh, people who begin to bring something really positive to the greater downtown east side. How can this audience that uh, I talk to uh, a few times a week, how can they specifically help you? What would you like them to do? How would you yeah. like them to respond to your 15 minutes? Well, I would love for them to consider partnering with us. And, you know, partnering with Mission Possible, it, there, there's three opportunities. You know, we're, we're a charitable organization, so we raise funds. Um, individuals can become a, a financial partner with us. Um, and, and we, you know, that's how we can keep the doors open and the lights on. Um, but there's two other ways that uh, are kind of unique to the ways that people can partner with Mission Possible. Uh, one is is they can they can buy Mission Possible services, and so uh, Mission Possible Maintenance is an exterior property cleaning company. And so you know we do everything from litter pickup to landscaping, to snow removal to graffiti removal, um, you know, and, and kind of everything in between. And so um, individuals with commercial properties can hire us to provide their services that they probably are already need. Um, but can have that added social impact. And then the, the other way um, is to be a, uh, an employment partner with us. And so we have individuals, um, we're hoping you know, about 100 individuals this year will come through our employment readiness program, we'll get six months of work experience with us, and we'll move on to uh, employment outside of Mission Possible. The only way that we can do that is through partners. Um, so businesses that are willing to uh, bring on someone who, who may need a little bit more flexibility, may need a little more support, um, but uh, they can intentionally be an inclusive employer, um, which really has been shown, you know, to, to make an impact on the whole culture of a company. You know, when a company intentionally decides that they're going to be an inclusive hire and, uh, and bring on an individual, um, you know, the, the, uh, it really changes the mentality and, and the way that that employees approach their work when they uh, when they know that that's part of the culture. And so, uh, we want to partner with with employers um, and give them the opportunity to to hire one of our graduates who has who has gone through this training, um, gone through this work experience, and and is a highly motivated individual wants to move on and 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 continue to prove that they. Um, you know, that they can, uh, they've got great skills and abilities that they can offer and, um, you know, want to uh, continue to um, serve the, the community and, and the city. Um, and so uh, those, those three ways through the financial partnership, the, you know, being a customer um, and so a, a, a partner in our services and then uh, an employer partner, want somebody who's able to uh, employ one of our graduates. Those are the kind of the three main ways. That's good. And you know what? You've got the best boss in this world and the next world. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> Thank you. Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Bye-bye.